A typical day in the life of the young man in the modern world is to wake up, leave home, sit in a car for part of an hour, arrive at work, interact with people from whom your existence is nothing more than a means to a paycheck. He drives home alone in his car for part of an hour. Even the brutalist architecture that surrounds him is designed to make him feel alone. He goes home alone, maybe to interact with virtual friends on social media or video games, maybe to consume entertainment and pornography alone. He is isolated. He is distant from his family, a family that has been fractured since his parents split up when he was very young. Every waking second of his life, he is confronted with the fact that no one really cares whether he exists or not. This may seem hyperbolic, it may seem like an exaggeration, but these are the conditions that many young people live in today. It's time that Christians learn this lesson. It is not possible to understand the spiritual miasma of our current era without recognizing how extraordinarily lonely most people are. You are... <laughs> Utterly alone. Alone. <laughs> Utterly alone. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now it's not necessarily true for the Christian man who is mm -hmm. working to turn back the tide on trash mm -hmm. world, mm -hmm. but for a lot of people, women, but it seems like even maybe disproportionately more so men mm -hmm. are incredibly alone. This this part really, you know, it, it kind of it spoke to me in a certain way because when I when I before I became to Christ, I lived in New York City, which is mm -hmm. one of the largest cities on the planet. It's just people on top of people, you know right. what I mean? They're everywhere. You can't get away. Mm -hmm. um, but I was, I was pretty, you know, I was pretty good at isolating myself, and I was yeah. able to do it very easily. You know, I'd, I'd commute about an hour, to, you know, to work mm -hmm. because, you know, even if it's a mile away, it takes an hour to get there in New York. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I'd pass by just tons of people. Uh, I had no idea who they were. And then I'd go to my room and, you know, whatever the night br brought, whether it was drinking, whether it was drugs, whether it was video games, whether it was pornography, whatever it was, mm -hmm. I would do that alone. And then on the, you know, on the weekends, I'd get together my degenerate friends, but like mm -hmm. my life was lived pretty much alone. Nobody really knew what was going on. And we even had, I had, I worked in a very high turnover kind of sales environment mm -hmm. and we would make a joke of it. People would just vaporize. <laughs> and I had a, I had I would say was a index card. I had like 10 index cards with tiny writing of names of people that had come and gone. Mm -hmm. And we had no idea where they went, you know, why they went, they would just be gone. Mm -hmm. But things just kept functioning. Mm -hmm. And it was a high producing office too. It was an office right. that generated a lot of cash. Um, and these people would just come and go and nobody mm -hmm. really even knew. Nobody mm -hmm. even knew, even really knew where they lived. And it, it was just, it was just an right. isolating type of experience. And again, yeah. I had friends, so I wasn't mm -hmm. totally alone. But I could right. live my yeah. life for a long time. Like if I didn't see my friends for a few weekends in a row, it could be a month, and I, you know, was alone basically the entire time in a city full of people. Mm -hmm. Right, right, yeah, and you're completely yeah. alone. And yeah. I think the city, um, it it exacerbates that feeling of loneliness. Uh, it's it's harder to feel as alone if you're like living out in the country. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. even if you're totally, you are totally alone. <laughs> right, you're actually uh, alone. <laughs> uh, it is. It's way more intense because you see people all day. And they don't care about you at all. No. Right. Right. If you just drop dead right in front of them, would they even stop to help you? <laughs> I, I've <laughs> you seen know? people that may or may not have been dead on the side of the street when, before yeah. I was a believer. And I just keep just walking. Keep walking mm -hmm. right by them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and so that that and, and that's in your you like you know this. Like you know that the this mass of humanity that surrounds you does not care about you at all. You're just one face in a sea of faces. And you know, that, that hits you pretty hard, yeah. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. That, that, oh, I don't have anyone. I don't have a people. I don't have a community. I don't have family or friend, real friends. Um, and that's the existence that most people live under today. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and, and it's, it's daunting. It's, it's terrifying. And yeah. And, and, and for the Christian, it shouldn't be that way. Even some Christians, um, have life that is this way. Even, you know, if you live in a big city and you go to, you know, like a large mega church, um, you're just a face in the crowd there too. You right. know, if you, if you go to a church that has 15,000 people, well, you can go there for years and never know anybody. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, and of course, a lot of people like that. Like that's well, the yeah, draw. Was, yeah, that's the draw. <laughs> One of the main attractions, I think for a lot of mega churches is the lights. I mean, literally the lights are turned down low. 
Mm-hmm. Um, the, the music is loud, so I can't see you. I can't hear you. I can come in a little bit late, and I can leave a little bit early, and it's just an experience. I don't have to actually be accountable to anybody no. or know anybody, meet anybody. Like that is It's like uh, going to a movie theater. Right. Like that's you don't, not the that's not the bug. That's the you, don't make any, you don't make any yeah. friends in the movie theater. Right. <laughs> you, know? right. you like right. just hope they stay quiet. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And people like that. Um it's you know, and it seems like we're such a lonely society today and the and the church sadly is well, I think the church probably does better on this one. The church, you know, in many cases is mm-hmm. kind of like, here's the culture, here's the church, you know, yeah. and it's like Pam from the office. It's the same picture. Yeah, same picture. You know, but I think yeah. that, you know, the church... Um, on this, the church on this, generally does yeah, better. Yeah, generally does yeah. better. I think, yeah. you you know, in fact, there are people who aren't even Christian who will still go to a church just to try to make some friends. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, and absolutely. Like that, that is one of the draws. And so praise God for that. Um, but even within the church, though, there still is... Um, a lack of friendship that I think, you know, prior generations experienced, and especially yeah. for older men, uh, to where, like, I think for men, um, the only relationships they have at all is with their wife and children. Yeah. Um, you know, like, where you'll, you'll hear the language of, like, my wife is my best friend, mm-hmm. you know, um, that kind of language. Yeah, and like, she's my only friend, the only one I have, the right. only person she's, that, yeah, that she's all cares my only me. friend, you yeah. know, and it's like, yeah. um, you know, but meanwhile, she has lots of friends. <laughs> yeah, she usually has lots of friends. <laughs> Uh, but a lot of guys, it's like your wife is your, your only friend that you have. And so mm-hmm. really I, what we're talking about, I think in this episode is brotherhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. anytime, yeah. you know, you see deep, profound brotherhood, yeah. um, it's rare. But when you do see it, even the church uh, thinks like, well, it must be gay. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. so like, like, so David and Jonathan, there's, yeah. you know, there's no way that those two guys could actually just be friends. Like, no, they must be gay. They must be yeah. gay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, that, that's what the world does with any close friendships. And you see this, like, like Reddit uh, idiots. You know, like they try to imply that two characters in a TV show they're secretly gay. You know? Right. Uh, like all the time. That's all they do. And and really, I well, think in most that, TV shows, they turn out to be. They, gay. they end up being <laughs> that. Yeah, right. the writers eventually, you know, uh, right. reward them. I don't watch these right. gay shows. Yeah, that's so right. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> but um, but that I, I think it's it's part of. Um, a people that that simply do not know what what male friendship looks like entails. What they've never experienced it before. They they don't know anything other than than you know uh, with this like the lust and and sexual desire. That's the only thing they can comprehend. Erot- uh, eroticism. Uh, eroticism. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and it's like so. Of course, they, they their mind goes that way because that's the only form of relationship they between two people they can even comprehend and i yeah. think that with that the church gears towards it does a better job than the world in, in facilitating facilitating relationship and community but primarily for women not for men and i think part yes. of the reason why is because back to the whole you know gnostic thing that we've been talking about but gnosticism pietism this whole mm-hmm. thing this world is not my home so if the world's not your home if jesus is coming back next thursday if things if god is ordained it's actually spelled out that things must get worse and worse until jesus comes back and he's coming back relatively soon and this world is not our home and the world is going to dissolve like snow and we believe yeah. we take that in a literal sense you know it's yeah. going to be burned with fire you know like all these kind of things you know um and, and for the record, I, we don't believe any of those things that I just listed, We're, but that's what a lot of people yeah. do believe. If you believe those kinds of things, then building doesn't make much sense. And here's the problem. Yeah. Uh, the essence of, in my experience, the essence of male relationship, male friendships has always been around fighting and building. Whereas yeah. the essence of female yeah. relationships, part of the reason why Christian women in the church have more relationships than Christian men is because the church itself, what it focuses on is introspection, it's yeah. uh, sharing, Feelings. you know, and divulging, yeah. and, and, you know, yeah. these kind of, so like DNA groups, gospel groups, yeah. confessing your sin, yeah. these kind of, you know. What's your anagram? Uh, you right, know? yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so uh, those kinds of things, whereas like for, for men, uh, there's such a de-emphasis on building and fighting and restoring Christendom. And, and mission. And, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but for like the best friendships I've ever had in my life is because we were building something together. Yeah. And if we're yeah. not, the moment that the project stopped, <laughs> here's the irony, the, the moment that the project stopped, then the relationship, it did get gay. Like yeah. not now, they didn't get like super gay. I don't have something to confess to, you know, like I'm not in the literal sense, you know, I'm not, this is not a confession, I'm not coming but you know, but in the metaphorical sense, yeah, it got yeah. like, it's like, Hey dude, how, how are you doing? How are yeah. you doing? Hey, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, 
You want to go do something? Like this yeah, is weird. Yeah, you know, like yeah, let's let's go do let's yeah, do something. Yeah, yeah. Cause if we weren't building, if we weren't making something or fighting something, like right right now, like all you know, all three of us are on, you know, we have all these different things that we keep up with, you know, with friendships mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But it's all circulating on around um building and fighting. Yeah. There's a there's a particular mission that we are all aligned on and and we have this vision and goal that we're all striving towards together. And that's right. Yeah, all, all the you know close male friendships I've had, that's it's been the same way. You know, it's like there's a reason why you know men in like a a, a locker room or, or young men in a locker room on like a football team are really tight, and really close, and this is like the strongest bonds that they have. Or or men that were in the military, you know, the closest friendships they ever had were were those ones where you're you are like literally in a foxhole with another guy and, and facing death. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, you're gonna you're gonna have a strong bond with with these these other guys, but even you know, even going back, like I, I will, you know, attend or, or do funerals for like elderly, you know, men from, you know, two or three generations back. And you see, you know, on the, on the program, well, this guy was a member of the Lions Club and the Elks and the Rotary mm-hmm. and all of these mm-hmm. different, you know, he was in everything. And, and all these, he had tons of relationships with all these people in the community. And it's because all of it was centered around different types of mission, different things they were trying to build and do right. and accomplish together. And that's what men do. Um, right. And you see that, like, and you see, you know, if you go on the, like the Facebook page of your local Rotary Club or, or whatever, something like that, or Lions or any of that, and it's all 70 plus year old men. They don't, they don't have any young men involved in those things anymore. And there's all, all sorts of reasons for that. We've talked about many of them um, in, in the, this uh, series here, but um men i think are conditioned to be alone and expect to be alone and don't go and join things don't participate in things because um they they want to be alone right, right. Yeah. they want to be isolated they don't want to yeah. have someone involved in their life um they they go to the big mega church where they can be anonymous because they don't want somebody watching over them i mean and so it's a kind of a two-way street like they're they're very isolated and they're depressed and anxious and life yeah. is miserable because they're isolated but at the same time they they don't want to not be yeah, right. because that's well, costly. It's a that trade off. Des- that described you know? me, oh. you know, for, to a T. Because, I, like I said, I had degenerate friends, and we would do degeneracy, mm-hmm. you know, all the time together. That was the mission. But right. it, yeah. well, yeah. that's true. Yeah. But 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 you know, to be honest, there were things that I I didn't want my friends knowing what I was up to. Yeah. You know, I didn't want yeah. them to know that I was drinking as much as I was. Yeah. Or doing yeah. whatever I was what it is I was doing. Like I I kind of wanted to be like I could have hung out with them any, every day if I wanted to, mm-hmm. but I chose not to, you, you know what yeah. I mean? I, I wanted to be alone. And yeah. I think one of the things I, th- I found so interesting in your book is you mentioned at one point, it was just like a line about how they've been tricked into thinking they're introverts or something like that yeah. or something yeah. like that. Cause, yeah. cause people talk about that all the they, time, all too. the like, time. Oh, right. I'm and, an introvert. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I've yeah. said that about myself before, you know, yeah. I, you know, when I go to an event like the fight, laugh, feast conference, yeah. I'm always dreading it going up to the event, yeah. but yeah. I always yeah. have a great time. <laughs> you know what I mean? You like, heard it here, everyone. The, yeah. <laughs> no, it, like going. I've said this many times. Yeah. I've said this many times. Um, yeah, this is no secret, <laughs> but I always have a great time and it doesn't feel stressful for me to yeah. talk to people. I always have a yeah. great time. Um, but you know, I, I, I do feel like I was almost like not, maybe not programmed to be, uh, to think I was an introvert, but to almost wear it as a badge of honor, yeah. you know, almost yeah. that, that, that I, right. I can be alone. I, I I'm okay yeah, yeah, with yeah. that. I yeah. don't need to have these friends and things like that. Yeah. And like, well, and the whole like, <laughs> concept of introversion, extroversion is really just what is the thing that drains you? Yeah. Right. Uh, is, does being alone make you tired and, and wipe you out or is being with people, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, I always, I always thought like, Oh, Andrew, you're, you're an extrovert. Like you, uh, you love being around people and talking with people and hanging out with people. And I do, I love it. Uh, but thing, things just like that, going to conferences and, and talking to people all day, like I come home from it. I'm, I am exhausted. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. am so tired and I need <laughs> yeah. like a week to just lock myself in my office and read and think. And it's like, Oh, maybe I'm an introvert. I don't want to be because of this like Reddit concept yeah. of like, oh, yeah. I'm an introvert, and that yeah. that means I can just watch video game or play right. video games all day, and and I'm good. Uh, it's like this badge of honor, like you yep. say. Um, and I didn't want to wear that, but it's like oh, I think I am one. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. But you, um, it, it, at the same time, like it, it's it's this culturally and, and socially conditioned concept where you should exalt in your own loneliness, yeah, and your own isolation and your own kind of weirdness, like people people want to be uh, super weird on purpose and off-putting 
uh, because then they then they have an excuse. Yeah. Then it's kind of a cope. Like, oh, my own, my loneliness. People, just, they won't get me. You know, they won't yeah. understand me. Right. Like, so Not I'm just because you're a freak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, I'm, I'm gonna like do this like deep uh, spurgy dive onto uh, uh, every facet of star trek information right. you know like right. and then and only talk about that and then i that's why i don't have any friends you know and yeah. it's like no no it's just because you're weird man. <laughs> yeah. and you want to be <laughs> yeah yeah and, and, and i think and, and deep down again i i think that i was ashamed of some of the stuff i was doing you yeah. know yeah and i and i i wore the badge of introversion as a cope essentially because yeah. yeah. I, I really what i didn't want is people to know what i was up to yeah yeah mm. oh, exactly you you it's a defense mechanism really more than anything else you yeah. know all right, I'm just going to say it. This show is fantastic. You know it's fantastic. I know it's fantastic. But I'm willing to admit there is one singular problem, the waiting zone, right? you got to wait a whole week for each new episode of this show to drop on Fridays at 4 p.m. Central Time. Unless you go on over to patreon.com forward slash right response ministries and then you'll be able to binge watch every single episode of an entire season all in one day so this is a season-based show right the whole idea is a deep dive on one singular topic so that you know everything there is to know each season comes out in a quarter right so a three-month period anywhere from probably eight to twelve episodes in a season and the moment that the first episode of a new season drops to the public then you can go over to patreon.com forward slash right response ministries and watch all of those episodes without having to wait week by week by week for the next episode to publicly drop so you know what to do don't waste any more time binge watch the whole season today yeah I, and in this day and age living in trash world like one of the things that i want young men especially to realize and i say young men that's a relative term 30s 40s yeah, we're young but men. yeah, yeah we're young men. yeah yeah <laughs> but what i want them to realize is like no but you've got to touch grass uh, yeah. you you have to um you have to actually have some real friendships yeah. uh, that you live nearby so like mm -hmm. that's part of what i want to get to is oh, like yeah. cuz like i think a lot of us it's like oh i have friends i have 30 uh, 30 friends on twitter yeah. you know and, and, we're, chat. Yeah. and we're on a group chat you know on signal <laughs> where we you know we're yeah. formulating our twitter strategies you yeah, know blah yeah, blah blah yeah, it's like okay yeah. that's great um, yeah. that's fine you know yeah. I, it's even that is and, it's relatively I mean, those great. can be real friends and those too. Are real, we're not saying that's not. Yeah. That's not. They can be. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But what I'm what, I, what what I'm trying to get at is that like um, but when it rains it pours and mm -hmm. when you know when the next thing cuz there will be a next thing, you know, what whatever, you know, if it's World War 3, you know, God forbid or COVID round 2 or you know what whatever. Something we can't even think. It of. really yeah. helps yeah. when you know someone who's within a 10 mile oh, yeah. radius mm -hmm. who who can like be at your front doorstep. Who are your people? Yeah. yeah. Who are the yeah. guys who that you would call you? to check on your wife if you were away? Exactly. Yeah. You know Those what I mean? Kinds of exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So having and really what we're getting at is like you need a church. Like you yeah. need a local church. I think there's still a lot of because what you're getting at in that chapter, Andrew, is the atomized man. You know, like yeah. that that man right now. Like again, you know, trash world has you know it has rulers in in this mm -hmm. regime and they want people who are easily manipulated people who are easy to to control um so okay like we've talked a lot about the physical uh, but mm -hmm. like okay let's make sure they're fat let's make sure mm -hmm. they're sickly let's make sure mm -hmm. uh let's definitely make sure that they're chemically castrated that they have mm -hmm. low t levels you know they have mm -hmm. low testosterone they're not very aggressive um all those kinds of things but in addition to that um let's also make sure that they're lonely yeah. like you know like let's make sure that um that they don't have they, they don't have households they don't they don't have capital they don't have property they don't own yeah. anything they don't have a wife they don't have children let's mm -hmm. keep them single and let's keep them lonely um mm -hmm. and if they do somehow you know end up with a wife and end up with kids and end up owning a home well at least let's make sure that the only friends they have are uh, in the comment sections on YouTube yeah you know yeah, exactly. or on Twitter let's make sure that they yeah. don't actually have brick and mortar flesh and blood yeah. friendships within yeah. within proximity uh yeah. because that's those are defensible that's yeah. defensible like when you have a local church with mm -hmm. real people who think mm -hmm. the same way mm -hmm. who all own property in the same town and some have you know run for local office mm -hmm. and you have you know this and that like that now we're talking about something that like yeah. actually is not just spiritually a threat but it is spiritually and literally yeah. a threat politically culturally all of this like all i i i mentioned this in the book you know it's it's funny 
you know, I will talk to uh, relative, you know, very conservative uh, boomer generation, you know, relatives about, you know, things going on in politics and how bad stuff is and things like that. And, you know, they will always at, at eventually at some point in the conversation go to, well, if it gets bad enough, we still got all the guns. <laughs> and like, the, I mean, I'm sure you guys have all heard this kind mm-hmm. of stuff before yes. all yes. the time. And I always just like, like laugh at that because it's like, okay, you've got guns. What are you going to do? Right. right. <laughs> like, what are you going to do? Like, and, and like they're, they're, they're chopping off the genitals of little boys uh, and taking them away from their parents. Right. Right. Is it not bad enough yet? Yeah. And right. no one's doing anything. Uh, yeah. And, and, yeah. and so it, it's the, the interesting thing there is like, you know, they'll talk about, well, yeah, we could, we could fight the U S government. They lost to the Taliban and, and they're just a, you know, a bunch of goat herders in, in, in Afghanistan. Like, uh, we could win. And it's like, no, you couldn't because you don't have, like, you would be alone. You're not organized. You're not like, and, and again, we're not, we're not trying to foment, you know, violent revolution. Absolutely not. The, we're against the, it completely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Totally not. I, I, uh, reject all, all violence. Um, <laughs> Most violence. No, you don't. Most violence. Yeah, not uh, all violence. <laughs> I, I reject. I reject that idea, right? Of, of you, violent you insurrection. You reject yeah. the, the being the initiator. Yeah, yeah. Don't. If I'm not going to fed post. To me. Yeah, yeah. I will. Then, then we will. I'll protect my we'll family. Do what we got to yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. Um, but um, right. They say this kind of stuff, and they do these kind of like verbal fed posts all the time, and it's like, no, you you don't get it. You don't have um, you don't have a community. You don't have people. You don't like if if the the governor of your state just unilaterally banned guns and was going to come confiscate them. And you said, I'm not taking this. I'm going to fight. Like you would be alone. A SWAT team would come and they would kill you. Yeah, you're, right? done. you're not going to call, you know, 50 friends and set up an ambush for the SWAT team. They're not going to go die for you. Right. Um, and you don't have anybody you're going to go die for if the roles are reversed. Like that, that world does not exist, but it did. If they tried to do it in like 1945 uh, with all of the GIs that came back from the war they would never have been able to do it because right. these guys actually would have done that stuff. And they right. had communities and families and, you know, extended networks in their, in, in their localities where they would easily do that. And we have an example of it. There was, um, I believe it was in Tennessee. I, I mentioned in the book, um, yeah, Athens, Tennessee, where there was a, um, a most secure election of all time that happened in their, uh, <laughs> in their County where the corrupt government just like stole all the ballot boxes and started stuffing them. And, and all of these GIs in like 1946 came back and they just grabbed their M1s and they laid siege to the county courthouse and won. And, and, <laughs> and nobody went to jail. None of this. They got the sheriff kicked out and all this kind of stuff. They, they won it. And it's like something like that is totally inconceivable today. Right. So when I hear the people talk, well, if it gets bad enough, we got all the guns. Like you don't have that world at all. What the, what the Viet Cong have, like the social capital that existed in, in, in Vietnam fighting the U S military or, uh, the social capital that exists in Afghanistan that does not exist anywhere, maybe in some Amish communities. And that's about mm-hmm. it in the entire U S that mm-hmm. it does not exist anywhere else. And that's, that's by design. It's not by accident. They want people to be isolated. They want them to be spread out. You know, they want kids to grow up and one kid lives in Washington. The other kid right. lives in Florida. The other one lives in Texas. And they want, they don't want family living near each other where it's like, yep, there's my second cousin and there's my third cousin once removed. And like, right. you, you don't want to live in a community where you're related to half the people. Um, right. They don't, they don't want you to have that. They don't want you to have men that are part of every civic organization in town and, and have deep connections to people. They want you to be alone. They want you to just pull into your cul-de-sac, not know the first names of any of your immediate neighbors and go in, watch TV, leave the cul-de-sac, go to, go to work and then come back. And that, that's your life. Mm-hmm. That's what they want. Like that, that is by design. And so how do you overcome that? <laughs> right? How do you get over that? Well, one, very first step is like knock on your neighbor's door and introduce yourself. Right. <laughs> right. One, like get to know people in your neighborhood. Maybe, maybe even have a block party and, and, and invite them into your house and, and like actually build relationships with people um, and join different organizations in your, your local community. Like join, there's all sorts of different clubs and things that you have interest in uh, that you can be part of that always need people to volunteer and help out. Um, there are, all the civic organizations that are graying and about to to die, 
uh, you could, you and like five buddies could take over your local lions club. Um, or even if you, right. you want to join the American Legion, right. You could take that organization over in your local town. Like think things like that. Like it's so, it would be so easy if you just do it. Uh, but it takes work, it takes time. Uh, but you begin to have, uh, these, this, these deep roots in a place and all of a sudden, right now the social capital doesn't exist. You're slowly rebuilding it. And, and it is the thing like, yeah, the, the cathedrals burned down. It took centuries to build and it burns down in a day. Well, you're not going to build the same kind of social capital, even in like one lifetime that took your ancestors generations to build, but you can at least begin to slowly stack that up and then you have your children add to it and, and so on and so forth. And it, it, it has to start with someone consciously doing the opposite of what the regime wants you to do and going well out of your way to do that. Right. And, and the, the men who do that will be king. Right. Yep. COVID was helpful in that yeah. regard. It yeah. was, you know, again, oh, yeah. it was a mercy from the Lord um, because it did allow, at least temporarily, it allowed for people to become mobile. Um, people yeah. who ordinarily, you know, they were stuck. Mm -hmm. uh, they had to live where they lived because of their job. And then all of a sudden they were able to work remotely. Anywhere. And a lot of businesses, mm -hmm. you know, Lots of them have gone back to you know people coming in, but a lot of a lot of economics have has yeah. forever changed since yeah. COVID. You know, some of it's not going back. You know, no. uh, stuff has gone back, but some things will never go back. And a lot of the places only went back because they're locked into a, a commercial right. you know, real estate deal where they have an office and it's just empty. So like, right. well, you better come back so we can justify having it. Right. Uh, but, but most there are places, plenty of places that didn't. And know. to remain competitive in the labor market, they have to allow that. Right. You know, so exactly. there's, that's been, that's probably been like the biggest boost for like, you know, this is not a, this is not a communist DSA podcast, but like the biggest boost for like labor and workers is work from home. Right. right. That's yeah, like yeah. the first gain we've made in a century right. of like life getting better is that now you can work, you don't have to commute anymore and you can live wherever you want. Like that's, exactly. that's a huge deal. And so it's with that, big. with that grace from the Lord, um, now is it like, I mean, that's probably the most common email that I get is, do you know of a church in my area? Do you know mm -hmm. of a church? My, like mm -hmm. people are churchless, Yeah, you know, because um, what, what we've seen, you know, when the veil was torn back in 2020, as it pertained to evangelicalism was that uh, a lot of our leaders were corrupt and a lot of them yeah. were, you know, they kowtowed to, you know, everything that Caesar said and quickly yeah. you know immediately gave it immediately yeah. yeah and we're very hesitant uh to take a stand i mean they're very slow yeah. to you know you know i mean there are certain churches that didn't gather for a year you yeah. know or and, longer you know yeah yeah so anyway so all that being said you've got a lot of uh de-churched uh christians right now but you have a lot of de-churched christians right now who who are actually able to move mm -hmm. if they wanted to and i'm not saying it's easy Right, like I mean, oh, yeah. maybe that maybe they're locked in with a really low interest rate. Mm -hmm. If they moved and bought a house, you know, the seven mm -hmm. percent interest rate or whatever. But um, but it's be more it'd be more doable a geographic move across the country than than any time previously. Yeah, absolutely, and that's I think when we talk about you know friendship, particularly male friendship, um, that's I think that's part of it is actually being physically in the same location yeah. to where you can be building together. Um, in a literal sense and not just virtually. Yeah. And it might mean like getting the guys in your group chat to like move to where you are or vice right. versa. Vice you know, yeah. like I mean, if you really are on the same page with all these guys, right. like, and these are your brothers that you totally. love and care about, like, all right, go to the same place. Well, you could know? you imagine like, and, and that's where I, I feel like that's again, where we, that's, that's like the line where we're like, okay, we're going to be, we're serious and we're going to put mm. dents in the gates of hell to a point but we can't we can't be too successful. I mean, we wouldn't want to win after all. <laughs> you know, right. we lose down here. That would so it's cultural like, Christianity. So we'll, like we yeah. find each other, you know, through YouTube and Twitter and this, mm -hmm. that, and the other, and then we start our our chat. And you got thirty guys who like who really agree on mm -hmm. like ninety nine point nine percent of things, and and guys with spine and with courage and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um. But then, but then they, you don't go the extra step. Mm -hmm. You don't go the extra step and say like. Uh, like, well, what if, like, what if we teamed up? And, and part mm -hmm. of it's because guys have responsibility. These are men. They have yeah. wives. They have children. They have schools. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not talking about public schools, but you know, but Christian schools. Mm -hmm. And they have churches. And they have uh, they have aging fathers and mothers. So mm -hmm. that's I think that's mm -hmm. part of it. Oh yeah. Um, 
but but if it's at all possible, I think w- the way that God has designed a man is just duty after duty after duty, right? Mm-hmm. Authority flows to those who take responsibility, yeah. and and you just the responsibilities keep coming, and that is, and I don't, I'm not saying that as a bad thing. Like no, it's a good thing. It's 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 a it's a an honor. It's an honor, a glory for a man, and so he just weight gets stacked, and he can carry mm-hmm. that weight and some more weight, and progressively mm-hmm. throughout your life, and by the end you look back and you're like you're carrying a mountain by the grace of God, yeah. and strengthening you. Yeah. But the point is that um, guys have so much responsibility and duty that's that's progressively, you know, gradually hoisted upon them. I think that's what that's what roots them there. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and so I guess I'm not saying it's impossible once you're a little bit older in your 30s and 40s. But if anybody's listening to this who's younger, mm-hmm. like one of the biggest things that I would like grab a guy in his 20s by the mm-hmm. collar and say is like, mm-hmm. okay, so you don't have seven kids yet. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, and your mm-hmm. and your parents aren't um, aren't seventy, you mm-hmm. know, or whatever, and mm-hmm. aging, and you and you haven't bought a house yet, you know, and and mm-hmm. I feel for you because it's going to mm-hmm. be really hard, if if even possible, to do that when it yeah. comes. But my yeah. point is, right now, like um, this is it. This is yeah. the moment. Find those fifteen based dudes that you're talking to, and like you know, and move right there. Yeah, and set up shop, mm-hmm. you know, because later on. It's re- it becomes increasingly mm-hmm. hard mm-hmm. to move. The danger of centralized power is often represented by the word king. As Americans, we hate the word king. Civilian ownership of body armor is about helping people to have increased power to resist tyrants and criminals. And so Armored Republic is about helping you to preserve your God-given rights to the honor of the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the king of kings and he governs kings and he will judge them. This is Armored Republic, and in a republic, there is no king but Christ. We are free craftsmen, and we are honored to be your armor smith of choice. But you got to have friendships in person. Oh yeah, it can't yeah, just yeah. be online. That's my point. It's got to yeah. be flesh and blood in person. And, and it's not to say like I mean there are uh, friendships that I have online that with guys that I've known for years and I talk to every day that I've never met in person. <laughs> you know, and it's it's I mean it's a different world <laughs> yeah, than, yeah. than than ever before. Uh, but you you can have you know, these deep in, intimate connections with guys um, and not have ever encountered them in flesh and blood and it's right. I mean, it's even weirder now with ai because maybe they're fake i don't really know um <laughs> well if you met but, them 10 uh, years ago you're probably safe. yeah i'm probably okay yeah exactly um some of these guys break the mold though i know who you're yeah. talking about <laughs> i don't think they make ai like that no, <laughs> no not yet not yet when they do then we're in trouble uh but yeah so it's like these are real friendships and i, w- I would love it if we could be in the same place together that would be right. awesome and and the the older you get, the harder it is to ever bring yeah. anything like that about. Um, but especially when you're younger, you should be you know in your in your twenties, you should be thinking, okay, what are my duties and responsibilities, and where can I go to build with other other men that want to build as well? Yep. And and that should be the priority in your mind is thinking, okay, what's going to occur? What's my general idea of the direction and trajectory of everything over the next forty or fifty years? And where should I be to accomplish the things that I think God can, you know, use me to do? Um, that that's how you need to be thinking uh, yeah. right now. Yeah, um, yep. yeah, and, and and this is going to look different in in like you guys have been saying, different situations call for yeah. different things. I mean, yeah. you might you might live in a town where you know your your family's well established mm-hmm. and um, you know you you know everybody, you're related mm-hmm. to half the people. Um, and, and you you may want to go out as an outpost and be, meet up with some you know fifteen other base guys and mm-hmm. your town's going to be just fine. Or you could be in a town where you know things are precarious, like you're mm-hmm. saying you have an older mm-hmm. relative and things like that, and you just it wouldn't make sense to move. Actually, it would maybe yeah. be an abandonment of your duties if yeah. you moved. Yeah. So it, it these are these are things that like there's no band aid answer for you know everybody is yeah, the same so, answer. Yeah. But, Here's what you should do, every single one of you. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, but, yeah. but 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 I think the point of this is understanding the fact that we ha- collectively have been atomized to the point mm-hmm. where where you know they want us to be alone we are alone m- many of us um, and so making decisions on where you live where you work what you do 
knowing that that is the current situation and we want to reverse that situation. We yeah. want to end that. Yeah. We want to destroy that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, you know, like I said it, you know, earlier in one of the previous episodes, but church planting has followed this mo mo same mode that people got spread out. They got, you know, isolated. So we got spread too thin. And yeah. I think the name of the game right now, and that's part of why, you know, I wrote the little fight by flight, but, mm -hmm. but I think mm -hmm. part of the, and it's not, you know, to flee, to avoid the battle, but it's to, you know, to run to, you know, the mountains, run to, yeah. you know, the defensible ground, turn around and start fighting, and then slowly, progressively take back uh, the land. Yeah. But all that being said, I think, um, one, you know, we spread our, our troops too thin. And the name mm -hmm. of the game right now is like, I know it's, you know, not the best example, but I, you know, I think of like the Avengers. It's like not just, you know, oh, not man. just, I oh, know, no. I know. Here we go. <laughs> I'm not saying, you know, I know the movies are, the, it's the epitome of fake and gay, but I'm just saying as a principle, can't believe we're going there. <laughs> as a principle, so I don't know, whatever, whatever kind of team, but my yeah, point is yeah. like teams, I think right now are the name of the game, like Avengers Assemble, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, instead yeah, of yeah, isolated, yeah. you know, isolated uh, little, you know, renegade, you know, all factors yeah, yeah but like yeah. no actually come instead of guerrilla warfare actually having organized platoons mm -hmm. yeah like, absolutely. that's a whole absolutely. like that's a lot and harder. The, the internet the internet to, is to, a is a double-edged sword you know yeah. you know it gives you these relationships that have the facade of being real but they're really not real but then again right. you can also use it as a tool to create these real real right. relationships absolutely that's right. i was just talking to uh to to uh, our producer uh backstage about video games and we were talking about uh, in the old days when we used to play Goldeneye together, right? Yeah, in uh, the living room. We would all yeah. be in the same living yeah, room. Yeah, and so yeah. and so we could actually play the game. We're all together, you know, and I, you know, punch my brother, you know, for doing something and stuff like <laughs> for that. For screen watching. You know, things <laughs> like right. that. Yeah, for screen watching. <laughs> you Stop knew it. I was there. You know, and that was a lot of fun, you know? Oh, yeah. And, and, and so video games now, you know, I don't play them anymore. But when I did, uh, they're all online. And right. so I'm still playing with people. Um, but it's just not the same. No. It, is, it, it does not create the bond. That mm -hmm. being said, you know, my biological brother, you know, we would use, uh, we would play Madden back when I was in college and it would just be like, for us, it'd be a phone call basically. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's how we talked on the phone. We would play Madden mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. talking. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, mm -hmm. that was, you know, it's a, it was useful in that way, but it, it really, it does not uh, replace when we used yeah. to play together in the same room. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, you punch each <laughs> yeah other. I never got to the <laughs> yeah. online. Uh, the furthest I ever got was Halo 1 LAN. You know, yeah, like land parties, the yeah, land party. bunch of nerds. Yeah, yeah. Th that was my in in high school. We would stay. We would pull all. Oh yeah, I did it in high school. It. Yeah, yeah, and, and it then was, I did it in it college. Great. Yeah, it was great. And, and then I did it after college. This also flew. <laughs> and and then I, kept yeah. it. I, I kept like literally, like I think what what Halo are they on at this point? Six. Six. Okay, so six? I was playing Halo I One. Six. I, I think know. when like the fifth one came out, and it's like, okay. and everybody's like, "Could we please play a different Halo?" <laughs> and I'm like, but they've got one, new weapons now, man. I was like, yeah, like I never even got to dual wielding. It was just Halo <laughs> One. That's man, that's this as far is as it, this know. is but old anyways. school. Yeah. So, the, but but the point is, the kids don't even do watching it in this, don't person, even flesh and blood, <laughs> yeah, with yeah, your friends, because because what would happen is like, all right, you finish that game, and now everybody's gonna get up. And you're mm -hmm. all going to grab a drink together, you mm -hmm. know, on the back porch or whatever. And then you're going to come back and you're going to play another game. You're Let's you're order gonna, a pizza, you know, or like, and you're, yeah, you're like, going to talk about how you sniped your buddy yeah, way across the course, screen. Yeah. You know? And there's yeah, camaraderie yeah. and, it, but like yeah. you actually can pat a guy on the back and oh, yeah. you know, and you know where he lives in real life, you yeah. know, and not, oh, yeah. you know, like yeah. this is a real person. And so, yeah, you need that. I think the name of the game is, um, it's, it's funny, but like, I really think the church planning thing did a number on evangelicalism. I think we spread ourselves so thin. Yeah. And now what you have is you've got a bunch of people who, a bunch of people who are just, they're lonely and the bar just, it, we, everything went down, you know, to the lowest common yeah. denominator to where you've got all these guys who went through some church planting assessment at, that aren't really qualified. Mm -hmm. um, but could you imagine like, I mean, Moscow is, you know, the quintessential example, but they're not the only ones who are doing it. There are mm -hmm. other people, you know, like Apologia is doing a good job. The mm -hmm. Ogden guys with Brian mm -hmm. and Eric, you know, and Dan, they're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. And like when you get like, it, it, it doesn't take a million guys. Yeah, I, th I think three is a magic number. When you get mm -hmm. three um, high value, godly mm -hmm. men, like, and they're in the same location, mm -hmm. then it just snowballs. People yeah. just come. Yeah. People keep coming. They're attracted yeah. to that. And then uh, you can form a school with yeah. ease mm -hmm. because you have resources mm -hmm. and you start buying land as mm -hmm. individuals, not as mm -hmm. an, a church institute, but individuals mm -hmm. that make up yeah. the church and starting businesses. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. 
I, and then, you know, 40 years, it, it took Doug 40 years. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to take us 40 years. Because he was the only one doing it. It took him 40 yeah. years because, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's not and a he, slight. They had to make because he was all the, the mistakes and everything. Exactly. And, and they're, they're inventing the wheel. Well, the wheel's been invented. We should be able to exactly. take Exactly. So, yeah, it that. took yeah. Doug 40 years, not because he's a, a, a dope, but because he's no. the only one who was willing to do it. No. He's a yeah. champion. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but uh, the guys, our generation, looking to that champion... Uh, it doesn't have to take us 40 yeah. years because of his hard work. We can yeah. stand on his shoulders. And I yeah. think if guys right now would say, hey, you know what? Instead of uh, all three of us getting to be a church planter, why don't uh, why don't we be willing to be bi bivocational, mm -hmm. at least for mm -hmm. the foreseeable future? And and we'll take, you know, maybe we take a housing allowance and we plant mm -hmm. a church together, three high mm -hmm. value, you know, caliber guys. You do that, it starts attracting people. Then you have those resources. And mm -hmm. it's like you got to skip the first 10 years of mm -hmm. the Moscow project, mm -hmm. you know, and now you're into like 10, you know, year 11 and 12, mm -hmm. even though you're technically only on year three or four. And it mm -hmm. just, it builds and it builds and it builds. And I think that's, that's what we need right now. And, yeah. and the cool thing about that is not just that those guys, you know, the leaders that they can have that camaraderie and that that male friendship together, building and fighting together, but it oh. attracts a certain type of person, yeah. and then all those people they find each other too. Yeah, everybody in the church has the same kind yeah. of bonds. Exactly, yeah. and yeah. like the feeling that you get when you go to like fight, laugh, feast or something, the feeling you get for yeah. a week at a conference mm -hmm. becomes just life. Yeah, your whole Period. life is like. Yeah. Yeah, our kids all go to this school together. Like, yeah. like the the feeling of fight, laugh, feast for a mm -hmm. week for most people is a feeling of uh, Christchurch people. Just normal life there. Normal life. Yeah, yeah. And it, and, and it could be normal life for a lot more people. Yeah, I, I remember that. I mean, we lived there for three years, and that's what it was like. It was just people everywhere. There's always things to go to and do yep. and be involved in. And you know, you go to psalm sings, and it's all the people, all different people that you know from church, and you're out there. And then, like, yeah, when I see the the video of like Gabe getting arrested, you know, it's like I'm I'm looking at the crowd. I'm like. I know like 80% of those people that are, <laughs> that yeah, are yeah. there with them. And it's like, and they're all there. And, and, and I can just imagine like the thrill of that happening. Right. And there, and you're confronting something that's totally wrong, you know, mm -hmm. to not allow you to sing and, and, and worship. Um, and, and you're fighting together and you're, right. you know, it's like, Oh, it, it, and, and it doesn't just have to be there. It can be in all sorts of different places, yep. you know, and you can build that. And right. and that's that's what we need. It's not that, you know, it's no one is is ragging on, on Moscow at all. Um, at least not here in this room. Right. Uh, and uh, well, plenty of people. Yeah, are, plenty of people us. are, but not us. Yeah. Um, and and the, the question is not, you know, well, can we make, you know, is Moscow good? It's like, well, yeah, it is. But there should be a thousand places right. like moscow is in, all the world America. to become moscow I think. and <laughs> i would say yeah. I, we can only hope and pray i hope so <laughs> i yeah. hope so yeah. it sounds yeah. great except for the but, u yeah. of i get rid of that but, yeah. uh. <laughs> so all right well i i feel like that's a good episode but just friendship matters the virtual thing finding people online that's a great social yeah. media is a great twitter it's it's great the fact that we can find people and and there is a sense of of warring and fighting and building online mm -hmm. um so, so it's, you know, the whole, you know, expression, tw uh, Twitter's not real life is yeah. true, but it's also not true. It's real life, but you need to take the right. not real life, the, the, the virtual reality part of it into real life. Yeah, exactly. You know? So, so yeah. do those things, but then use that. And that's say, why we're all here in the same room, right. by the way. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because exactly. we found <laughs> yeah. each other yeah. in, in this thing that's not real life, but it turns yeah. out it yes. is, it it is. somewhat real yeah. life because yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're all three real people mm -hmm. and we're sitting mm -hmm. in a real room. Yeah. You know, and so yeah, so, he's not uh, an AI construct. That's yeah. right. He's yeah. a real human being. Right here. <laughs> so so do that. You know, partner with those guys, and especially if you know if you're young and you haven't really rooted yet, the cement hasn't dried. Find find yeah. some people, flesh and blood. Absolutely. Uh, and then two, um, if you're older, uh, but you're in that transition period, where it's like may maybe you're like super discouraged and mm -hmm. you just lost a job. Take that as like God's providence to say, okay, maybe. Um, Let's let's this time let's uh we have a moment right now. Maybe we move to Ogden. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. we move to Moscow. Maybe we move to Georgetown. You know, mm -hmm. and because mm -hmm. um, I think God's doing that, and I don't think 2020 yeah. was the only time to rearrange. You know, the the chairs. Yeah. Um. The, the, it's like musical chairs in 2020. I don't think that's the only moment. It's not going to stop there. Yeah. yeah. It's no. not going to stop there. So. All right. Did you like the episode? Great. You want to watch the next one? Wait a whole week or. Go to patreon.com right response ministries. Again, patreon.com right response ministries. Binge the whole season right now. What are you waiting for?